right welcome back to everything mathematics and welcome back to this new week in this week we'll dip deeper into number theory and this week it will be all about estimation and rounding what are we going to do today our objective for today is very simple today we're going to simply be discussing the purpose of rounding or estimating why do we do this why do we do it in maths why do we need to know it and we're going to also look at ways in which we can estimate or ways in which we can round off. So with no further ado, let's, dip, let's go into it. What is the purpose of estimation? Or what is the purpose of rounding off? Sometimes in maths we ask round off to the nearest decimal, round off to two decimal places, uh, final this to three significant figures or whatever. But why do we do these things? Very simple. So let's look at two main reasons why I believe rounding is important. One, it's simple. To have an idea of something in the absence of a measuring instrument. And that is one of the things we need to understand when we estimate it, when we are rounding. To begin with, we are not really getting the real answer or the authentic answer. But as highlighted here, we will have an idea of something in the absence of a measuring instrument. So, for example, if I want to know how long, what is the length of a table, let's say, in a classroom. And, of course, I, I, I may not have a measuring tape, I may not have a ruler, but if I have a good grasp of estimation, I might be able to say the length of that table is three feet. And notice, the three feet was not measured, but it gives somebody an idea of what that possible length could be. And of course, when we do estimation, it's not just length we consider, but length is usually the primary one we use, but we can estimate anything. We can estimate volumes, we can estimate masses, we can estimate lengths, of course. But that's one of the primary reasons why we estimate. In the event that we do not have a measuring instrument, we can give somebody an idea of whatever the length, the width, the weight, or the volume of something is. And secondly, another reason why we estimate is to save time performing measurement, believe it or not. Sometimes it's not because there's a lack of instruments, but it's simply because we want to save time. And in some instances, the actual measurement may not even be necessary. Just an idea of what it would be would be sufficient enough. So, for example, if I want to know um, how many students in a class, for example, I may not necessarily need to know exact, the exact number, but an average will help me to organize or to plan or to put into perspective whatever it is that I'm thinking about. So, yes, yeah, sometimes estimation solely saves time and nothing is wrong with that. Another thing we must note, and this is also very important, estimation, like measuring, will never really yield an accurate response, but as much as possible, the aim is to come close to whatever should be in order to, of course, get that idea. So that's really and truly the bottom line or the aim when we're estimating. And when we deal, when we, when we reach measurement, you will see that measuring does not necessarily also gives the accurate, perfect answer. But it all comes down to the instrument and how close to accuracy, that's a key word, accuracy, we will get. But I will not dip into that discussion. We're going to get there when we reach measurement. So yes, basically, this is the main purpose of estimation and rounding off. So in the future, when teacher asks us to round off to two decimal places, two things you should have at the back of your mind. When you round off to two decimal places, one, you are coming closer to an estimated answer. And two, you are also going away from the real, authentic, exact response. Because that is what estimation does. That is what estimation is all about. You don't estimate in hopes to get the exact answer. I mean, if you do, kudos to you. But the whole idea when you estimate is that you want to get something close. I know of persons, and this comes with experience, when you're, you're so good at estimating, without thinking twice, you always hit the nail because you experience. So, for example, I, 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 I come out with a piece of wood or a piece of board or a length of something. Bam, they could tell me exactly what is the length of that thing without measuring. And again, as I said, that comes with experience. I, I work with some water, let's say, in a cup or in a bottle, and they'll be able to tell me exactly maybe what's the volume of water I have in that cup or that bottle. And again, that comes with experience. 
um, they see a particular person and they could estimate exactly how heavy that person might be. And yes, as I said, estimate. But sometimes that's how it goes. When you experience, sometimes you hit the nail, but the aim is not to hit the nail. The aim is to get an idea of what the actual weight or measurement, whatever it is, right? So moving on, let's look at ways in which you can estimate or ways in which you can round off because that is basically what we taught in maths. Ways to round off, ways to estimate. And the first one is very untraditional, but is one that we take for granted. Yes, guessing. Nothing is wrong with guessing. And the whole thing behind guessing here is, of course, having an idea of what a length, a width, a volume, or whatever looks like. And that is the first step in any estimation strategy, steps, whatever. One of the things I normally do when I teach estimating and round off, I, I, I come with different things in the class. It might be a cup, it might be a, a piece of stick, it might be um, a ball, anything. And I just ask students, guess, what is the length of this? I don't care what they see, but they have to, they would use whatever preconception or whatever they knew before and just come up with something. How heavy is this ball? What do you think is the length of the stick? I'm not asking nobody to measure it, but just guess how much money you think I have in my pocket, how much money you think I have in my wallet, and just guess. They have no idea, they would have no hint, no clues, no whatever, but guessing oftentimes, sometimes, is the best way to start looking into the whole concept of estimating and rounding off. And of course, we could always prove it afterwards by using whatever instrument or by analyzing whatever question and so on and so forth but yes guessing number one strategy never take it for granted and here now we're going to the traditional mathematical method so of course we have decimal places one of the ways in which you can estimate and round off is by using a specific or a certain number of decimal places and this is what we're going to be doing for the rest of the week so from number two to number five we're going to be looking at these different ways in rounding off so we have two decimal places, three decimal places, four decimal places, and all those are wrong enough. One of the things I normally tell my students when, I'm, when we're doing wrong enough is that the minute you start wrong enough, you are getting rid of the real answer. And that's a fact, because the fact is that you're cutting off remainders of numbers. So for example, imagine you have a decimal like zero point, let me see if I could write this one. So imagine you have a decimal like what? Um, let me write it here. Three point, let's say eight nine one two eight, and this is a decimal. And I say to run off to two decimal places. So here now, two decimal places, I would end up with three point eight nine. The one two eight. Don't worry, we're gonna look at how to run off in the next video. That's not the aim today. But what I'm trying to show you here is that the rest of these numbers they no longer exist when I round off initially here to two decimal places. And that is one of the things you need to understand early up. And I'll expound on it even more in the next video. Yes, once we round off, we are getting rid of the authentic number. And that is why all this falls under estimation, because it's not an exact value. It is not the exact number. But the whole idea is that we come into something closer or something to what we need. Good. Another strategy which we use to round off, of course, we have significant places or significant figure. And we're going to look at that this week too. We also do to the nearest whole number, tens, hundred, thousands, whatever. Nearest cent, nearest dollar, you could call it any There are many ways in which you look at this one. And we're going to look at it also later in this week. Let me just erase this before it comes into the writing way. Right. So this is another way in which we round off or in which we estimate. And last but not least, we also have standard notation or standard form, which is a very interesting way in which we also round off number. And I like standard notation a lot because to some extent, you do not really get rid of the real value, but you also come up with an approximating answer because the real value is not presented to you wholesale. It's usually 10 to the power of something. And you will see more of that when I, when I reach there. I don't want to jump the gun too much. So remember, wrong enough and estimation is something that we do generally in life. As to why we do it, as I said earlier, save time performing whatever measurement or counting, whatever. And of course, just to have an idea of something without necessarily having to use an instrument. So let's remember that. 
and this will bring us to the end of today's video so again as usual remember to like share and subscribe if you haven't subscribed as yet comment of course in the comment section if you have any question any query any concern anything that's not clear and of course feel free also to turn on that notification so that you'll get videos on a daily basis as soon as it is uploaded until then you ensure to have a blessed monday and enjoy the rest of your week see you all